All right, so this question has the answers uh, already provided here, so we can check here. Um, the first thing is to identify um, the proportion here, and that's a pretty simple thing. This, uh, this line here is just 557 divided by 1100. So in other words, 50.6% of the people, uh, the respondents, felt vulnerable to identity theft in this poll. So we want to set up a 99% confidence interval that we've taken this sample right, of 1,100 people and 557 said yes. So we're trying to say, what about the whole, the whole population of, of people that are worried about identity theft? Um, who feels vulnerable and who does not? All right. So when they asked for the margin of error, I pulled up the formula sheet here. This E represents margin of error. That's what E represents in all of these. All right. So you see that if you have a proportion, you use this thing. If you have uh, a mean that you're trying to evaluate, set up a confidence interval for. If you have sigma unknown, you use this, and if sigma is known, you use this. All right, so uh, one uses a t-table and one uses the z-table. So those are a little bit more intricate, but this one's actually pretty straightforward. We just need to identify the value of margin of error e and our confidence level. The only other thing we need to know is the confidence level of 99%. So now if I go back to the formula sheet, I can bring in uh, the uh, Z alpha divided by two values from the formula sheet. Let me go get that. So if you look down in the bottom right of the second page of the uh, Z tables, you see we have these common critical values. So if we're looking at a confidence level of 0 0.99, our critical value is 2.575. So that means in this formula right here, this value uh, that belongs here is 2.575. So we take 2.575 and we multiply that times the square root of p hat, and p hat is this value we've found to be 0.506, and then q hat is 1 minus that, so that'll be um, 0 0.494. And then we divide by n, which is 1,100. All right, so if we do that, we should get that margin of error. All right, now I'm going to show you also, uh, here's how you might do this on the graphing calculator. And so first off, let's just calculate this manually to prove that uh, we get the right answer. 2.575, and we're going to do square root. We're going to be careful here with our parentheses. Uh, point, uh, point 0.506, and then 0.494. Close that parentheses, divided by 1,100. And we get 0.0388. All right. And just so you know, my, my Labs Plus um, is pretty forgiving on some of this stuff where calculators may round it and where you may round it. I think they would accept 0 0.388, 0 0.388. Certainly on the proctor test, you wouldn't need to worry about it. All right, now here's an, here's an alternate way to approach this. You can also find the confidence interval, which we're going to do right now on the calculator. And uh, from that, you can find the error. So let's do stat. And we're going to go down and we're going to do test. And we're going to scroll all the way down. This is a one proportion Z interval. All right. Notice the first ones on the list are all tests. Those are things we're going to do in the later chapters. For now, we're doing intervals, confidence intervals. We need these ones to say intervals. And this is a one proportion Z interval. Uh, just for reference, the other two confidence intervals that were here and that I covered up, one of those is Z and one of them is T, depending on whether sigma is known or unknown. But here you just put in your X, and our X was 557. Our N is 1100. And our confidence level, instead of 0.95, which is what it defaults to, we were 0.99. And so with that, you get this confidence interval number. All right, 467 and 545 are given to you here. And that's where those numbers come from. So the way you can get the error from this is to take... 0.506 minus this number, so 0.506, which was the the number here, right? You take that and subtract either one of these. One will give you positive, one will give you negative, but I'm going to do 0.46753. An interval is balanced about um, that um, p hat proportion. So when you do that, you also get 0.3847. Again, I'm rounding a little bit, which gives me some error, but that's another way to get that answer.